Good morning and welcome to worship on this Palm Sunday. If you're joining us at home, welcome. If you're further afield, welcome to you also. Those who are members of this church will have received one of these crosses delivered to them during the week. For those people further up afield, you may have one left over from last year. Perhaps you might like to produce it and sit and hold it while we worship together. A reminder that Palm Sunday is the beginning of Jesus' journey to Jerusalem, with the events of Good Friday and Easter Sunday still to come. As Jesus journeyed into Jerusalem on a donkey, the crowds welcomed him. And we sense the joy that he received that day, being acclaimed. We also remember the heaviness of his suffering which was to follow. Jesus' mission is drawing to its fulfilment. So let us pray. Father, as the crowds welcomed the King, Jesus, and sang your praises, we pray that many more will welcome you into their hearts and lives over the coming year. We pray for opportunities to spread your good news and ask for courage to take the good news forward. Lord, you are our God and we welcome you. Father, as we recall the donkey which Jesus rode on, we pray for that real humility in our lives. We treat status and image casually and truth 
and loving service seriously. Lord, you are our God and we welcome you. Father, the children sang and shouted your praise. And we pray for the children in our homes, our city and our land. May we not fail them in the support and teaching which they so need. Lord, you are our God and we welcome you. Father, the crowds were responding to the healing love they'd seen in action in Jesus. And so we bring to you in our love and imagination all those we would have brought to Jesus for healing and help. Give them comfort and reassurance, wholeness and hope. Lord, you are our God and we welcome you. Father, Jesus knew he was riding to his death. So now we pray for all those on that last journey, especially those burdened with fear and guilt. And we commend to your eternal love all those who have died thanking you for the blessings that we have received and even for the grief which has been part of the love which we shared. Lord, you are our God and we welcome you. Father, we too spread our coats on the road as we express our thankfulness for all that you've done for us and the amazing extent of your love to us. Merciful Father, I accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ, who taught us when we pray to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His love endures forever. Let Israel say, his love endures forever. Open for me the gates of righteousness. I will enter and give thanks to the Lord. This is the gate of the Lord through which the righteous may enter. I will give thanks for, your answer, for, for you answered me. You have become my salvation. The stone the builder rejected has become the capstone. The Lord has done this and is marvellous in our eyes. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. O Lord, save us. O Lord, grant us success. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. For the house of the Lord, we bless you. The Lord is God, and he has made his light to shine upon us. With bows in hand, join in the festival procession up to the horns of the altar. You are my God, and I will give you thanks. You are my God, 
and I will exalt you. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His love endures forever. Amen.
The Gospel reading today is taken from John 12, verses 12 to 16. The next day, the great crowd that had come for the feast heard that Jesus was on his way to Jerusalem. They took palm branches and went out to meet him, shouting, Hosanna! Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the King of Israel. Jesus found a young donkey and sat upon it. As it is written, do not be afraid, O daughter of Zion. See, your king is coming, seated on a donkey's colt. At first, his disciples did not understand all this. Only after Jesus was glorified did they realise that these things had been written about him and that they had done these things to him. Thanks be to God for his word. Have you ever noticed that when you're telling the story of something which has happened to you, it almost feels as though you're living the experience all over again. If you're talking about somebody who's really got up your nose, you get cross again. If you're talking about a wonderful surprise, you get excited again. In the days before people had books and newsreels to record their stories, they would just tell them to each other to make sure that they were not forgotten. And each time, the experience would be relived. This was what was happening on the day that Jesus rode into Jerusalem. A huge festival called the Passover was about to take place in the city of Jerusalem. It was a celebration of that most amazing story in the people's history. The story of how God had miraculously rescued their ancestors from a life of slavery in Egypt. The story had been told over and over again to each new generation. Even the same kind of food, the food which the slaves had eaten just before they escaped, was eaten by their descendants in a spirit of hope. For even though they were now living under Roman occupation, Jesus' people, as they celebrated the Passover feast by repeating their story, they found their hope rising. If God could rescue his people once, then he could do it again. They were convinced. They'd heard about all those amazing things which Jesus had done. Could he be the next saviour? So they went out to meet him, waving palm branches, symbols of victory, shouting, Hosanna, which simply means save us. As we mentioned, we often give out little crosses made of palm on Palm Sunday. They don't look much like symbols of victory, do they? And I suppose in a way they're not. For it all went wrong. Jesus didn't play the part that the crowds expected him to play. He didn't lead a military rebellion. And in a way, there's no one we hate more, is there, than someone who's not lived up to our expectations. Whether they be politicians, celebrities, partners or mentors. We hate them just for not being what we thought they were. And the last piece of the armour of God is the sword, which, as St Paul said, is the spirit, which is the word of God. And we generally take this to mean the Bible. And I guess if we're honest, many of us have been guilty of using the Bible to hit people with, not literally, 
who is seized on texts which support our point of view, our position. And we've hurled them at people who've got different ideas from ourselves and whose experience of life has led them to, to ask some very painful questions. And perhaps in a way it's rather sad that men and women have had their faith seriously undermined and their confidence in the church destroyed by Christians using the Bible to hurt and threaten, to crush and to destroy. For in a way it's so frighteningly easy to take the parts of the Bible that suit us and which appear to be maintaining our position. The people cheering for Jesus on that first Palm Sunday may well have had verses in their minds which described God as a mighty warrior with a sword of wrath in his hand. They seem to have forgotten other verses like those from the prophet Zechariah about the king who will come in gentleness riding on a donkey and who will be concerned with goodness justice and peace rather than with violence and bloodshed. Did you notice in our reading how St Paul links the word with the spirit? This was how it was in Paul's Bible which is what we now call the Old Testament. The word and the spirit we used to describe the power of God in the world and in the human race. We read of people who, to whom the word of the Lord came and this was not something of a heavenly dictatorship. It was inspiration to see things differently and to understand what was going on in the world. To receive your own personal vocation what God needed you to do and what you most needed to do for your own sake. Then by the power of God, in the Spirit of God, you lived out that word because it became the story of your life. The word of God then was not something static. It was given by God in the context in which you were then living. And as with God you lived out your own story, so you became aware that the story you were living had been lived by many others before you. It's true that Jesus was a disappointment to a lot of people. They wanted a story of a military victory and who can blame them? Their lives were harsh under the Roman occupation. Where was God? they asked. Why was he not doing more to help them? And I guess that many of us are asking those questions in these pandemic times as well now. So St John, who wrote down the Palm Sunday story that we heard, said that even Jesus' closest followers did not understand what he really was all about. It was only after he'd been glorified that they really understood. For us, the term glorified brings a vision of Jesus seated on the Roman Emperor's throne and ruling the world. But for John, the word glory means simply the presence of God. Jesus' glorification then is just that moment when he most fully displayed that he is God. And that for St John was when he was nailed to the cross. When he took on all that human fear and hatred, and pride, and greed, suffering, 
and despair. This was when God was most truly seen in Jesus. In a way, I suppose, it sounds crazy. It has always sounded crazy. But right here, right now, we are facing a most deadly enemy. And we've learned it's an enemy that political power, military strength, monetary wealth, human knowledge, have all found they cannot conquer alone. We are learning, aren't we, that the weapons which we need to beat this deadly virus are such things as compassion, community responsibility, service to one another. All things, I suggest, which Jesus himself stood for. So maybe he did get it right. Maybe this was what God was all about. And maybe if we walk the way of Jesus through this terrifying time, we shall find that in the fullness of time, God is there with us. That the word of God still comes to us with insight and direction. That the spirit of God still empowers us and maybe, just maybe, when this is over, we shall find it possible at last, with the skills which we have learned, to create a world of peace with justice, of safety, of security, of old enemies joining hands and finding something more important to live for than settling old scores. So live your story. Pray to find the place where your story meets the story of Jesus and the truth about God. And may God's living word be your defence and your weapon against all the darkness that surrounds you. Amen. Jesus rode the donkey into town Many folks turned out from miles around What a sight to see A man to set men free Riding on the donkey into town Jesus, is it true the things the people say of you? Did you really make a blind man see? And if all I've heard about you turns out to be true, can you really do the same for me? Jesus rode a donkey into town. Many folks turned out from miles around. What a sight to see! Now let us pray. 
Father, it would hardly surprise us to learn that you had long ago given us up as hopeless. Currently, we often feel like despairing of ourselves when we remember the temptations we have willfully sought out, the known danger signals which we have recklessly ignored, the harm which we have done in countless ways to other people and to ourselves. This is the tale we all have to tell and it's sickeningly familiar. Yet, Lord, we know that you have not rejected us. Far from us giving us up as hopeless, you have kept on coming back to us. When we see Jesus eating with sinners, we know that there is hope for us. May his love be brought home to our hearts by your Spirit today. Lord, we believe that it is by knowing and serving you that all men can come to the full height of their humanity. But we do not very often see it happening, Lord. What we see is a world divided between the overfed and the hungry, the comfortable and the homeless, between some entrenched in privilege and others clamouring for their rights. Between those who have and those who have not. We see goodwill made ineffective by stupidity and honest me failing to measure up to the demands of a crisis. We see the peacemakers and the bridge builders pushed aside because progress towards justice seems too slow. Yet, Lord, also in this world and identified with it, we see Jesus Christ. We see his life of love. We see his cross, not only as they were long ago, but as they are now where every spirit is allowed by men and women to govern human actions and purify human motives. At this time, Lord, we remember particularly all the frontline workers, those who after 12 months of regular and continuous work to support people ill with COVID, but not giving up and continuing to offer themselves in your name to other individuals. And as we see and hear about these people and their motives, Lord, we recover faith about the world. And through that faith, we find hope. For we know, Lord, that you are the source of this faith and this hope. And you are the source of the love which alone can make that hope come true. May those who believe this, Lord, learn to avoid disturbing your love. May all who revere you and make haste to promote justice and to practice compassion and overcome the terrible strengths of evil with the power of good. Help us, Lord, to join that movement, to tell others what Jesus means for us. To explain in compassion how they too can come to a hope These and all our prayers, Lord, we ask in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen.
the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with each and every one of us now and forevermore. Amen. <laughs>